I am Vinny Tolerich, folks. Your good intentions have been stolen, but don't worry. I'm here to help you get them back. You may be soft and succulent at the beginning of this process, but hang in there. Before long, you will be lean and mean, guaranteed, just like the beautiful Miss Gina Grad. Yeah, Gina. Wow. You cry tonight. I don't yeah. know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, everything reminds me of a song. <laughs> And what we were talking about off the air, boy, that brought me right there. <laughs> Didn't take long, did it? Okay, I know it's super annoying for anyone who's not us who doesn't know what we're talking about, but please just trust us that that was hilarious. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm feeling great. You know why? Because I have my Pure Coffee Club coffee and my Idlewild camping mug. Well, camping, please. Um, so I'm very, very happy. This is what we went on our little mini moon weekend getaway after the wedding to Idlewild and it's filled with my favorite Vinny coffee. So I'm pretty happy right now. Is that a designer chip in your coffee cup or no, I dropped it. Yeah. But it was this uh, little high grounds, little coffee place in Idle. I, I don't know what you know about Idlewild. I know you're I know a lot there. about Idlewild. I used to I... go rock climbing there a lot. Of course you did. I thought Vinny's not going to know anything about Idlewild because there's no skiing, really. It right. is so lovely. I fell in love with Idlewild, more than Big Bear almost. Um, yeah. So I got my Vinny coffee and I'm happy. Um, but I do have a couple questions for you, if we could just jump in. We can. We can. Go right ahead. Okay, so... Our rain has passed. Our long statewide nightmare is over for now. You know, California really got pummeled. And I know it's funny that we're all marking ourselves safe from being, you know, safe from rain. But from it was a, pretty... From a rain. Yeah. It's, yes. But it yeah. was pretty brutal. It was pretty brutal. I mean, we're not... We don't have the infrastructure for Gina, it, as you know. It's rain. It's... I couldn't agree more. I'm, I'm in the valley. I'm not going to get a mudslide. I don't give a shit. I had nowhere to be. But, you know... People here a little etsy ketsy, as they say in Greek. So um, finally, now that the rain has passed, I've been walking every day. It's my favorite thing. The fresh air, you know, in L.A. right now, it's, you know, still winter. But what does that really mean to us? Not much. Yeah. And I was dying to ask you. I actually made a note of it. The gym is great. You're, if you go every day to the gym, you're a better man than I. And we all know that. Right. That being said, I'm very curious because you do a lot of indoor exercise and outdoor just living. How important do you think fresh air is when it comes to exercising? It's so important. Um, as a matter of fact, because I work indoors, you know, in podcast and yeah. you know, running a company and all that kind of stuff, it's very important to me to get outside every day, right? And the beauty of uh, the beauty of my day is... I can start working. Usually I don't start working until 12 or one. And I know most people will go lottie fucking da, right? Look at you. No, but I'll work until midnight. Right. I'll work right. a 12, 10, 12 hour day every day because I like to use my mornings to go. If I'm doing nothing else, you know, I go to the skeet field and, and work on that activity. <laughs> um, sometimes if I can't get to the skeet field, if I have meetings coming up or whatever, and it's not winter time, I'll go in the backyard and, and just do archery for, you know, a good hour, 90 minutes. I'm sorry. Quick, quick uh, pause. You have yeah. an archery situation set up in your backyard. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I built a, you know, a, a thing, a trap and everything. So, I, of you know, you did. my arrows don't go flying into the neighbor's yard and sure. everything. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, that, that's not a lot of that thing. That's just a, you buy some netting from, an archery company and you just hang it up. Wow. And you know, but everything is portable. When I'm done, everything comes down, goes in and in, back into the shed because especially, you know, the mats and all that kind of stuff that you shoot into would you would ruin them if you left them outdoors. I'm but, glad you explained what you were doing because since you're Vinny and you're, you know, a manly man and you're the brawny guy from the paper towel label, mm -hmm. I just assumed you bailed your own hay and set that up as your archery situation. I did have straw when I was in California. Uh, there you go. Yeah, I, I had a bunch of straw as my mm -hmm. background against the fence. That's what I figured. And use that and then put my target with my, you know, these big, you know, because when you have expensive arrows, you don't want to just shoot them into anything. Sure. These things can last forever if you treat them right. 
but at any rate, the, the whole idea behind archery or shooting or whatever is it takes my mind. You have to be in that. You have to be deep into that. It, you know, you got to have a connection with what you're aiming at and what you're shooting right. towards. It's my form of golf, right? Huh. I don't want to go play golf. I don't want to be associated with a, a club or anything else. This is my get my brain out of it. I'm outside. I'm getting some sunshine. Uh, sometimes when I have to take phone calls, and you, uh, and the reason I, I I don't shoot archery when it's cold is because you have to be pretty close to a t-shirt to shoot, you know, to shoot very accurate because the string is going across your body. And if you have oh, a coat right. of any sort, yeah, you know, it's hard to keep that pushed down. You know, Understood. I can wear stuff to push it down a bit, but it's just not as much fun to shoot archery. I mean, it hits your arm every time you have to hit, you have a thing on your arm, right? Yeah, that leather. Yeah, right. It's made out of plastic, but yeah. You know, okay. so, but, but you're always looking for excuses for lack of a better word to get outside. Yeah. You know, um, that, um, you know, I recently took up rowing, there's <clears throat> kayaking, there's mountain biking, which is now becoming road gravel riding for me, but it's get outside, get outside, get outside. And then like today, you know, it was gym day. Now, a lot of days I do gym right here in my gym, mm -hmm. but it's leg day and they have a lot of leg equipment at the gym in town that I don't have. So leg day is almost always out of the house. Gym. Yeah. Unless I'm so busy and I'm just going to do two or three sets of lunges here, you know, four okay. sets of lunges with weights and then do some squats and then some deadlifts. I'll get legs in that way here. But I like using the leg press. Sure. That's what you you're know. paying for. Yeah. And, you know, I could do hip thrusts here with the bar, mm -hmm. but they got a hip thrust machine over there yeah. where, you know, it, it's it's just more fun, I guess. Oh. And leg day sucks <laughs> to begin with. That's what Vinny, that's what Vinny considers fun. And I get that. But I, so that makes perfect sense to me. And I just was hoping for us lay people who, you know, a lot of people, especially around the country, I don't have an excuse, but for other places, they're kind of in hibernation right now. And soon enough, you know, the snow is going to melt and the, it's going to warm up a little. What, can you just give us a couple basic physiological reasons why do it, why exercising outside is good for your health? Before I, I do that, you know, whenever I talk to people that are from like Minnesota, you know, yep. North Dakota, that kind of yep. thing, they have a different idea of what's comfortable to go out in. They sure than even do. We'd be like, Serena will go out. Serena, it, it could be 25 degrees and Serena's going to go out inside and run. Now, if Not it's bad. 20 degrees, she's done, right? Right. That's it, the threshold. Yeah, like, it, you know, I've seen her go out. And I'm like going, Jesus Christ, she's going to run in that. It's going to sear her lungs up. I, oh, my God, I hate that. I'm a, I'm a pussy when it comes out. She goes out in that, right? And um, that's why I think she's a witch. Yeah, I'm living with a, you there's, know, some kind of supernatural. Yeah, there's no other ex explanation. She must be a witch. Right. But then I talk to people in Minnesota and, uh, you know, North Dakota, and they'll go, look, I, I have my limits. Anything below five, below zero, I, okay. I'm I'm out. I'm out. Right? Like they have their limits. Sure, that's a limit. Five below yeah. zero. Yeah. yeah, I've had some. They'll say eh, as long as it's it's something in the teens. Some people go zero is my number. So depending on where you live and what you're used yeah. to, that becomes your number. Right. Right. That makes so, sense. Yeah, I I I get that. You know, people in Alaska they go dog sledding is forty below. Well, and that's the thing. Yeah. And we're not just talking about ultra runners. We're talking about, you know, middle-aged ladies who, well, I have my snowshoes. So, yeah. you know, it did just built different. Yeah, it, it's, it's a whole different thing, you know. And, you know, it, you know, does, and, and your your question is is exercise, you know, yeah. what is tell, it? Remind me and just tell us, you know, it's like I, basically, and I know it's going to sound like an excuse for me not to go to the gym. That's a separate conversation. I'm yeah. wondering, does it, does it, what are the benefits of exercising outside in fresh air or are there none? Fresh air for one. Right. Does um, it, does it, do you think it's a stamina thing or is it just the thought that there's a wind blowing and a sun shining? I just feel better when I'm walking. All right. So number one, you get the vitamin D. Right. You know, it's hitting your face, hitting your arms. You're getting your, you know, sunshine makes such, 
a big difference in your life, right? So that, you know, getting fresh air, you're not getting recycled air in a gym and the whole thing. And you will tend to go longer outside. So let's say you go for a walk jog right. outdoors. You might go for 90 minutes. Whereas when you're in a gym and you hop on a treadmill, after oh. 15 minutes, you get, uh, as your people would say, agita, and yeah. you start going, what else could I be doing right now besides doing this? It becomes a prison cell. Absolutely. I think you probably I think you just hit the nail on the head but with the changing environment and the stimulation of being outside you can go so much longer I was on the phone uh over the weekend the boys were playing basketball and I was doing the track and I looked down and I had already walked you know and for me pretty good 8,500 steps yeah and I wouldn't have just sat on a treadmill like a like a rat and done 8,500 steps in a gym. Yeah, that, that was close to five miles. You got, you probably did, you know, a little over four miles at 85. And I felt great. Yeah. Uh, look, and it's all about perception. And I think that's the, the key to what we're talking about here. Yeah. Perception. You take the rowing machine, which is considered the most boring of all of the things you can do not moving, right? Sure. Um, five minutes on a rowing machine feels like an eternity. Feels like your whole life. <laughs> And you should know, aren't you in the like four billion club? Yeah, yeah, I am. And, but here's the deal. You put on a television program and you say, okay, Hallmark movies are exactly an hour and 24 minutes. Not that you know. Well, you know, they work it in because it would be such and such with commercials if they did commercials, but they don't, you know, I get them for free. on. Every, on every, everybody's hearing this, yes? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm good with it. Uh, look, I'm fine with with that because I get uh, Serena will Serena understands it. Kristen does not. Kristen thinks is, she can't wait to tell everyone that Mr. Rough and Tumble watches Hallmark movies around the clock. <laughs> she thinks she's got something over me. It's like Kristen. I don't I'm care. happy to talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I tell everyone, and here's why. And I'm going to get back to the roar. Every day, all day long, someone's telling me I'm a piece of shit on the internet. Oh, sure. Join that, the club. That, when you're a, a, an E-list celebrity on the internet, everyone's telling you you're a piece of shit all day long. Sure. A lot of people are telling you you're great, but guess what? Oh. You, you, you don't believe them just like you try not to believe the ones that tell you you're a piece of shit. That's right. And then I deal with business. Uh-huh. You know, and that's not easy. And I do everything else. And I do it for like... 12 hours a day, I need a release. I yes. need I need something to do. When I get on my my bike or my rowing machine, I don't want to watch Griselda. I don't <laughs> want to watch some horrible human being who hurt other people. If for anyone who doesn't know, because it's popping up on my Netflix suggestions as well, she was like the cartel mafia queen, right? Yeah. And yeah. if you ever saw a picture of the real Griselda, that's they a were looking woman. That's a rough day right there. The the casting seems generous. Yeah. Oh yeah. And by the way, I had uh, this guy Eric on my Friday show. It's coming up. Uh, you, you go back one week and you'll hear Eric. Eric's mom was the, was the woman, the cop that brought Griselda down. The woman in the what? it was done in her life. Yeah. I mean, the guy's a big keto guy, big fan. Wow, that's crazy. He calls himself Keto Five O. On you know he was a <laughs> cop too. He became a cop. Wow. Yeah. So oh, his mom has been interviewed that. a lot, you know, okay, because of, awesome. um, yeah. So I'm not going to watch that crap. Right. Right. I'm not going to go watch the, you know, anything where, you know, I don't want to see grifting. I don't want to see yeah. anyone getting hurt. I don't want to see anything. Yeah. About all I can take is a misunderstanding, you know, that ends in a, a marriage proposal. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a misunderstanding right after their meet cute. Right. right? <laughs> Give that me that perfect sense. Yeah, I'm in. Right. So, <laughs> getting back to the rowing machine, the most boring piece of equipment in the world. Right. But if you want to be good on the water, you definitely got to do that. You got. I do a lot of steady state rowing, and what sometimes uh, you just get a pace. My heart rate, you know, it comes up on the meter because I wear a thing around my chest. I see where the heart rate is. I see Stay what's doing. Yeah. And I keep it right at 
you know, between 125 and 130, steady state rowing. And usually the short days are 45. The long days are an hour and a half. Sometimes I get all nutty and go two hours, but it's very oh, seldom. That means I'm, you know, it rolled into another Hallmark movie. Sure, of course. And, and I got the time. So why not? Well, you can't. You got to know if they're going to end up together or not. Well, you know, they're going to end up together. You just want to see what the misunderstanding is going to be along the way. Yeah. And it's never anybody's fault. It was just, you know, like, like you said, it's a misunderstanding. Nobody has some <laughs> real trauma lessons to learn. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So. All right. So when you're watching a T oh, football too, football, a football game takes you a couple of hours. I'll get off in the fourth quarter because I'll be at the two hour mark going, okay, sure. enough of this. You know, with half. Boy, right? Sorry. You and my dad would have been best friends there. He said there are three sports he cares about football, football, and football. The only other thing he really cared about watching was the, uh, was the American musical. Love football, love really? musicals. Oh, you guys would have been best friends. Yeah, I, I, you. We've talked about your dad. Yeah. Oh, I, I would have probably Gina. If you would have had me, I would have probably married you just to be his son-in-law. <laughs> My dad, I, I get it. I, it just, and whenever you say things like that, I think, boy, in another life, the two of you, it's oh, going to yeah. be pretty funny. And so you uh, sit, you stay on that rowing machine, right? But here's the deal: if I had to turn that TV off. The next five minutes on that oh. rowing machine might as well be my entire life. But here's an interesting thing. As you know, when I bought this house, it came with a pool. Right. A pool that I never dip a toe in. It's for the neighbors. It's for the neighbors. Serena, maybe twice a summer when she comes from a long hike. Mm -hmm. I think when Nina Tyshows was here, she got in it for like three minutes. I was like, oh, my God, I'm glad someone's actually getting wet in this pool. Thank you, Nina. Please well, I, clap for me. I know the only reason you have it is to coax your wife into getting into a swimsuit because I've seen those pics and yeah, it, yeah. I she she's sixty two and she looks ridiculous, just ridiculous. You know what? I'm coming around on this witch thing. Yeah, she she might be a witch. Yeah, she it, it is not. You know, but here's the deal: if I'm outside now, here is it: if I'm watching television. I can stay on forever. Right. Turn the television off. It's like someone took the batteries out of me. I can't, I can't do it. Yeah. Right. Take it outside. Just take it right out these doors and, and, and reel it around over by the pool. Now I'm in the sun. I got my shirt off. Uh, you can see back there. Right. Yeah. And I got they my, should be so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> they, they need to see this. And then, um, I could be back there and my mind goes into a different realm because I'm outside in the sun yes. and the, the breeze and the whole thing. And it's like, wait a minute, I'm not watching television. I'm looking at trees around me. I, I, I just stared at a squirrel for three minutes you know, <laughs> or, or whatever, right? Yes. For whatever reason, I could be out there for an hour and it feels like I'm somewhere else. I'm transported. That makes so much sense. You know what? I, I don't I have this is just words I'm using. I'm not a scientist and I have no idea if this is correct, but it almost sounds like the difference between natural energy and synthetic energy. Like we're inside and we're synthetically energizing ourselves with the TV, but we're outside and suddenly we just strip it away. We don't need it. Yeah, I, I wish I, I need to get an expert on that. Maybe yeah, that explain be that to me because I have a buddy who um, who rode a boat, um, a two man crew across the uh, Atlantic. Yeah, from England to blah, 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 blah. And uh, lived to tell the tale? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was part of uh, Talisker, you know, the the uh, liquor company. It was wow. sponsored by that. And it was a bunch of teams that did it. And my buddy did it a few years ago. And he wasn't even a roar. He, he, he was an, he's an actor. And um, he just decided, you know, I'm just going to go do this. And he and his trainer, who was also not a roar, they got a boat they fixed up the boat they got sponsors and the whole thing that's incredible and uh yeah yeah they 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 went out there and did it and during the training i asked him i said how did you train for this and he says well you know they're equivalent of a navy seal type guy over in england he who had done it right he you know once he goes once i got into long you know just steady state rowing and i was able to get two three four hours this kind of thing he told me, okay, here's a test. Get into a dark room one night, start at, you know, 10 o'clock at night, 
and uh, have have water on one side of you in the dark that you know you can grab, and on the other side have a piss bucket. Right? And he goes, so you have water in a piss bucket. So you just go and and see in the dark without knowing your time or anything, just keep pulling on that that rope, set up a timer, and see if you could get to eight hours. Eight hours. Eight hours. Yeah. And he 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 did it. He I said, How far did you get? He goes, I actually got to like six and a half hours. And he goes, My mind. Uh, he goes, you're just rowing in the dark. I've always wanted to try it. Come in this room and just turn it out and see if I can go an hour and see if I can peg where an hour is. You cut out, Jen. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm freaking out. That yeah. sounds like absolute hell on earth. The, and that's the thing. Yeah. You're, mentally, it sounds like it's undoable. But think about it. Even though you do two-hour shifts and you do it all day and all night, you, you know, that's what they're doing when they're doing these races, two-hour shifts, day and night, and that's incredible. that's what they do. Yeah. That's you're you're in the dark. You can't see anything around you. You're just rowing, and you're looking at a compass in front of you, and you're, just, you're looking at that compass right in front of you, and you're going backwards, and you, you're just keeping that compass on a course. This sounds, I mean, this is like some major deprivation. That When you said Navy SEALs, yeah. that's what it sounds like. Yeah, that's what those guys do. It's all okay. training. I'm going to end this episode by uh, talking about something. Maybe you've seen this. It probably doesn't pop up on your Instagram or anywhere. But there's a guy, he never shows, he's interviewing people on the street, so you never see him. You just uh -huh. see who he's stopping on the street. Uh -huh. And he'll stop guys, usually about my age, who look like me, you know, guys that are somewhat jacked for their age. And he'll go, sure. hey. And he stands outside of a gym, obviously. That's where you're going to see these guys walking into a gym. <clears throat> and he he asks us, hey, would you mind if I ask about your routine? What do you do? Right? And he'll ask them what they eat. And there's always some version of either low carb or, you know, I don't eat more than X number of calories. Some of them do it calories. Right. You, you very seldom hear vegan. You hear vegetarian every now and again, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, he asks them if they take a lot of supplements, a lot, of, and most of them don't take supplements yeah. of any sort. And when they do, it's always a little protein powder or right. maybe some creatine, but nothing north of that. Right. Right. Um, but I, every time I see one popping up, I watch it all the way through because his, his last question is the question, because no matter what, whether someone says they do it on calories or, you know, some of them say I work out seven days a week and he'll say how much aerobics and some will say I do aerobics every second or third day. Some people say no aerobics, other people, you know, I just hit the weights or whatever. Everybody, they're all over the place, but they all look good. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing I've noticed and almost 100%. I, I can't say because I don't go watch it, all of his videos. But the one thing everyone does the same. What do you think that is? I, I honestly have no idea. But I've been sitting here trying to figure it out. What could they all have in common? They all have exactly one thing in common, almost to a person. And I, I'm sitting there going, bravo. I, I do the Rudy clap every time they say it. Because... I it's I'm the stuck. simplest thing. What? They all sleep eight hours a night. Ah. Eight hours a night. And by the way, I'm a guy back in the day, I, I think I gave myself cancer, you know, because I was working all the time. Work, work, work. You know, now I, I don't work until noon. That's why I, I switched my day up. Yeah. I was killing myself working from six in the morning until 10 every night. And then I was riding a bike and doing all this crazy stuff and sleeping four or five hours a night. And that was it. Yeah. And, you know, I, you know, cancer crept in there. I really think that's how I did it. Right. Well, we finally I mean, care about the hygiene of sleep. Oh, yeah. I've had I've had guys on this show. And, and look, I had to work from after cancer. I had to go from four hours to five hours. That was difficult because my I could not sleep. My body. Thirty years, Gina. 30 years of doing one thing. And and no matter how much you exercise, your body isn't exhausted enough to sleep. It's exhausted and I would go to sleep even on days when I could have slept longer, like nothing the next day. Yeah. 
four hours I would be up, you know, like, yeah. what are we doing? Let's rock and roll. I worked myself into five hours. And then I worked myself into six hours. Wow. And then by the time I left LA, I was like at six and a half hours. It took me years to get there. Right. And um, finally, you know, I've been at eight hours now for a couple of years. And I'm hell bent on that eight hours every night. It has changed my life. Right. And I've had sleep expert after sleep expert on this show talk about this stuff. And it's the one thing when you look at super fit men and women, mm. my age, 60 year olds, they're all saying eight hours a night. Doesn't matter what kind of diet they're eight hours a night. Cardio, eight hours a night. Nothing but weights, eight hours a night. And all the bodies look about the same. Wow. Yeah. I'm I'm so happy to hear you say that because that's become, you know, so popular late you know in the last few years in a good way like you know because we we're a culture that says you're weak you're lazy you're all of these things if you stop to sleep you're you're yeah. weak and i'm so glad that the conversation around that is finally changing i don't want to misquote him so i'll just say that i dreamed this in a you know in a, a non-lucid state but i swear i remember hearing that dr drew many years ago did a study of dementia and it yeah. was CEOs, Fortune 500, janitors, every walk of life. They were all dementia patients. And if I am recalling it correctly, the one thing they all had in common was they didn't sleep. Yeah. And that the, these are the kinds of things that uh, that cause that wear and tear on the brain. And look, I've run down, I've run my, um, you know, once I got a little older into my 40s and early 50s, I've gone to where, oh my God, I'm, I'm so run down. I go see a doctor. And an endocrinologist, and they would say, well, you know, they would do my blood, and my T3, my mm -hmm. thyroid, would be so far off. Like one doctor described it once as saying, we normally see this in intensive care. That, that's what? how much I would run myself. I would just run myself down. So I, I feel better. hypothyroid. Yeah, I would just screw up my thyroid. And the, the only way to fix it, rest. Yeah. Sleep. And, and, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, crazy. The only thing I was going to say about that is, you know, I, I was the same way for a long time, burning it at both ends. And the only thing that would stop me, and you know this on a much grander scale, is getting sick. Because if you're not going to rest, the body will make you rest. And that yeah. isn't real rest when you're sick. No, it's your body trying to fight back. And a yeah. uh, friend of mine who ran uh, Good Sam and, and you know, she, she was uh, the hospitalist at Good Sam, one of the biggest hospitals in L.A. Um, she she once told me, um, you know, I said, what, what about when, when all of a sudden I started hearing fibromyalgia? Fibromyalgia. Mm, she goes, yeah. she goes, it's a quick way to fix it. And I said, how's that? She goes, get two nights of sleep in a row. Yeah, this is the person who runs Good Samaritan. She goes, anyone, anyone can fix, you know, I get it, folks. You're going to yell at me for saying, oh, I have fibromyalgia. I have to be... I get it. You're special and different. The bottom line is you get a couple of nights sleep and the symptoms of that will go away. Now, you, you can't go back to your your old ways. You got to keep right. doing that. Right. That's the problem for a lot of people. Right. I'm healthy now. I can go back to what I was doing. I got patched up. Yeah, pat, yeah exactly. And there's a woman I, I coach... Um, uh, her name is Jen Mendica. She's lost like 80 or 90 pounds now. <clears throat> and she's got, she works around the clock, right? She, and she doesn't get a, she doesn't get paid a lot for her work, but she, and when her schedule goes to nighttime, weight loss goes down, right? As soon as stress and cortisol goes up, weight loss starts to plummet. Remember when you met me, Vinny? was yeah. when I was doing two jobs, two full-time mm. jobs. I started, yes. I woke up in the quote unquote morning in the middle of the night, 3 a.m. I would go do my morning show. Then I would go right to the Adam Carolla studios and I would get home around five. So I was working pretty much five to five and I was so sick and so overweight and so exhausted. He, Adam took the free vending machine out of the studio because of me, because yeah. I was a zombie and I would just 
kind of walk in and gl- I was every morning when you get up in the middle of the night like that, it's a trauma. Yeah. I never got used to it. I, it never was fun. It, it It's every morning is like just a giant disaster when you wake up. And I would just walk in and just grab Cheetos and sit there and go, we're starting the show. OK. And and thank God I met you because yeah. that's when I took it off, because that was a real. A real gut punch, literally and figuratively working those hours. And yeah. I couldn't agree more because I experienced it firsthand. Yeah, and look at you now, folks. She's out there writing books. <laughs> she's got uh she's got the the Instagram, my extra family. Go check it out. Right. Uh she's on a podcast with Brian Bishop called um The Brian and Gina Show. It's yeah. the official podcast of LA magazine. Lots going on. And of course, the book My Extra Mom, which is a children's book about step families that you can get through Amazon and Barnes and Noble. But of course, the way we do it is we go to vinnytortorich.com, we click the Amazon banner and we get it that way. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me and Vinny. Yeah. So go do all of that. Uh, you know what to do with me, the Amazon thing Gina just mentioned. Rate and review this podcast. Now, I know there's haters that you guys, you know, just sit on your hands, take a knee, don't do anything, just keep hating me. That's fine. But don't get other people thinking that I'm a bad guy because as it turns out, according to my mom, I'm not a bad guy. So uh, go do all of that. We also have the VIP group is closed right now. I'm not sure when I'm going to open it again. People are loving that. Gina's part of that group. I am. Um, I'm very excited to get very involved because I love community. Yeah. And th- th- it seems to be going uh, swimmingly, as they would say in the other country. Uh-huh. Uh, so um, go check that out. You can you can go to vinnytotteries.com forward slash VIP. Put your name on. Whenever I open it up again sometime in the spring, you guys will get an opportunity to come in. Um, but everyone seems to be enjoying that. So that's what we have there. On behalf of Gina Grad, my name is Vinny Totterich. Put life into living and do it with enthusiasm.